Hello all, I Kumal Sharma greets you all upon our hub of education, Gargi classes. Here I going to couple up the part 1 of the Tempest with the today's lecture part 2 of the Tempest by William Shakespeare. So here we are fixing our way towards the well-renowned last play, a genre of tragic comedy by William Shakespeare. The day before, as I have came across with the introduction and the major characters of the play. So now, we all came to know about all those personate characters of the drama. So now, it's time to leading ahead towards the context of the drama. So here, I go with a detailed overview of the drama The Tempest, the Tempest by William Shakespeare here. So we are moving towards act first, scene first of the drama. So here the scene begins. The tempest opens in the midst of fierce storm. So as you all know, and when I discussed all about the characters of the drama, there I came to know that, there I made you all to know that, uh, of course, the scene begins in a ship which is about to wreck over there. So, the tempest open, opens in the midst of a fair storm. The location is a ship at sea. So, the first scene only which happens into the sea where a ship is there with a royal party on board. There is a royal party happening on the board. As the sailors fight to save the ship, so all the people, all the people over the board are trying to save the ship which is about to wreck. So several of the royal passengers enter. There the several royal passengers enter. Among them the Alonso, the king of Naples, demands to know where the master captain is to be found. So he is looking for the master captain. Now, the boatswain worried that the passengers will interfere, orders them to go below deck. So, what boatswain do is he worried about the passengers that, of course, at, the, at this crucial time, the passengers will, will definitely interfere in his task. So, what he does, he does just give them a command and give them command and ask them to go on a deck, below on a deck. The king's counselor, Gonzalo, Gonzalo about whom I have discussed, an honest lord of Milan. So, Gonzalo reminds the boatswain that he is speaking to the king. Now, the Gonzalo, the honest lord of the Milan, he makes the boatswain remind that he is speaking to the king of Naples, Alonso. But the boatswain points out that if the king really has so much power, he should use it to quell the storm. So what boatswain speaks about, about boatswain, I have discussed in the characters that boatswain is a very practical man. He goes with the things which are right. He is very practical. So what he says at that time on the on commanding Gonzalo that you are speaking to a king, so you should speak in a very a polite manner. That time, what Boatswain said, that if the king has really these kind of powers, then he should use it to quell, he should use it to tranquil the storm. If he lacks this, sorry, if he lacks this power, the royal party should go below decks as the Boatswain's Boatswain orders the royal party exists presumably to go below deck to seek shelter so after uh, his speaking that if the king has such power then he should use that to tranquil the this kind of storm after speaking this he commands all the royal party to just go below deck to seek the shelter so the royal party passengers does do the same and they follow the command of Boatswain over there. So here you could see what kind of situation is there. There is a ship in a sea, in a vast sea. There is only a ship which is about to wreck. And the, there is the royal party over there which is boarding into the ship. And what kind of situations from they are crossing. What kind of phenomenon mentality they have been come through throughout these uh, this whole scene. 
they all feared excited and they scared by the scene of course and they are looking for the things which can help them to save from this wrecking and the boat swain the another person character who is very practical and who tries to save the passengers and he commands them to go below to deck and she seek the shelter over there and the passengers follow the same next one within moment however antonio sebastian gonzalo have returned top side again now these three characters antonio the duke of milan now who ashrabed his own brother brother prospero antonio sebastian who is the brother of alonso and gonzalo the honest lord these three person return again on the outside much to the botswain and uh, botswain's annoyance so now they are there to annoy botswain again because botswain asked them to just go down to seek the shelter below on the deck but they again come uh, come over the uh, come outside and with sebastian and antonio cursing him so both sebastian and antonio starts cursing the botswain the botswain continues in his efforts to save the ship but as botswain is a very practical person by avoiding his, their talks he just focus focuses only upon the things which can save them from this wrecking soon however the sailors enter with laments that the ship is lost uh, fearing that they will all soon die antonio sebastian and gonzalo elect to join the rest of the royal party below decks where they will pray for their survival so here what happen is all the passengers the rest passengers on a sh- on the ship they came outside and starts just lamenting that the ship is lost and now we are going to lose our life too so they all have in the phenomena of fear scaring phenomena into all those are so now they all have the phenomena of dying that they are soon going to die they that they are soon going to lose their life now what antonio sebastian and Gon- gonzalo do they just go back to the uh, deck and they start start spraying for the for their survival so this is all about our scene first act first of the play in which the scene of ship breaking is shown all right so this is all about our um, first scene of act first now we are moving towards the act first scene 2 all right so here i am leading opens on the island now as i already discussed about it that the that only the single scene the scene first of act first takes place in she on a ship the rest scenes take place in a, in a remote island all right so here we are moving towards that remote island where the another character exists so here the second scene of act first opens on the island the remote island with prospero and miranda are there prospero the earlier duke of milan and miranda the daughter of prospero watching the ship as it is tossed by the storm so they both prospero and miranda they both are watching the ship which is about to wreck which is about which is tossing on a sea so miranda knows that her father is creating the storm here miranda knows that through the magic of prospero his her own father is creating the storm and she begs him to end the ship's torment and her own so now as i told you that miranda is very compassionate affectionate she is very lovable kind of personality she is she is kind hearted character in this drama so what she says to what she begs to her own father that please just stop this torment of the ship and stop this torment of mine own because she is also tormenting by the by the scene of tossing the ship over the sea now since she suffers as she watches the ship's inhabitants suffer prospero reassures his daughter that his actions have been to protect her he also tells miranda that she is ignorant of her heritage now prospero is going to reveal the real heritage of miranda over there and he says that you doesn't know about your real heritage that's why you are putting questions to me 
he then explains the story of her bright right and their lives before they came to be on the island so here we are moving towards the scene which happened before the 12 years of this uh, beginning of this drama so what prospero reveals here prospero begins his story with the news that he is the duke of milan so first of all we all know that he was the duke of milan before the 12 years before boarding over this island, remote island, and Miranda is a princess. He also relates that he is abdicated, sorry, abdicated day-to-day -day rule of his kingdom to his brother, Antonio. Prospero admits that books held more attraction than duties. So what he did in his past that he just starts giving starts giving the day-to-day -day rule of his kingdom to his brother Antonio, upon whom he had a lot of trust. That's why what he did, he gave the authority and the power, the part authority and the part power to his brother Antonio, upon whom he had, he had trust a lot. So, what Prospero's most interested in, he interested in books more. What he said that Prospero admits, he admits to Miranda that the books had more attraction than duties. For Prospero, books are the more, more powerful for him to uh, being an attraction for his overall body. So, and he willingly allowed his brother the opportunity to grasp the control. As he had more, more attraction towards the books, he easily allowed his brother the opportunity to grasp the control over this. But Antonio used his position to undermine Prospero and to plot against him. Now, what Antonio did over there, he started plotting against his own brother Prospero, who trusted him a lot. Prospero's trust in his brother proved unwise when Antonio formed an alliance with the king of Naples to oust Prospero and seize his heritage. So here, later on, while Prospero started giving the power and authority to his brother Antonio, what Antonio did, he took the advantage of the scene and he, he conspired with the king of Naples, Alonso, to banish Prospero and his daughter Miranda from Milan. So here Prospero and his daughter were placed in a small ricky bought and put out to sea. So both Antonio's brother Prospero and his daughter Miranda both were placed into a small ricky boat put out to sea. Now there a sympathetic Neapolitan Gonzalo provided them with rich garments linens and other necessities along with these he also provided to prospero the books in which he had keen interest from his library eventually prospero and miranda arrived on the island where they have remained since that time so from this scene you could get to know that how antonio along with alonso the king of Naples conspired against Prospero and how he snatched the position of Prospero from him and how he took the advantage of uh, Prospero's trust over Antonio. So now how he landed over this remote island where they remained from 12 years. All right. So now we are moving ahead. So this was all the heritage from which Miranda and Prospero related. Now, when he finishes the tale, Prospero uses his magic to put Miranda to sleep. The spirit Ariel appears as soon as Miranda is sleeping and reports on the storm, the ship and the passengers. So here what happened is, now Prospero finishes his story about the heritage and now what he does, he puts Miranda to sleep so that she wouldn't be able to know about the further forthcoming scenes of the drama. So here, after sleeping Miranda, there, there appears Ariel. Ariel is the spirit, the helping spirit of Prospero about whom I 
I made you know in our discussion of characters. So here Ariel appears into the scene and she reports everything or he reports everything to Prospero. All right. And Prospero about the passengers. He tells everything all about to Prospero. Ariel relates everyone except the crew was forced to abandon ship. Ariel tells Prospero that the passengers have been separated into smaller groups and are on different parts of the island, that the ship with its sleeping crew is safely hidden in the harbor, and that the reminder of the fleet thinking that the king is drowned has sailed home. Ariel then asks that Prospero free him as had been promised. But Prospero has more need of his spirit and declares that Ariel's freedom must be delayed a few more days. So here into this particular part of the drama, what happened is Ariel does her particular task which was given to, her, given to him by Prospero. So here he reports everything what happens over the shipwrecking. She te he tells everything to Prospero. And about the passengers that in a small group the passengers are divided and they boarded over the parts of the island different parts of the island and the rest of the crew of the ship is safely hidden in the harbor and that the reminder of the fleet thinking that the king is drowned has sailed home Ariel then asked that Prospero free him. Then Ariel asked that Prospero had promised him to free after this task. Then Prospero said that, of course, I promised you to free you. But as I need your more help, so that's why at this time I am unable to make you free. So after completing my all the tasks which is related to this particular storm, I will make you free. So here this is all happened between Ariel and Prospero and the sleeping Miranda. Later on, when Ariel leaves, Prospero awakens Miranda and beacons Caliban, the son of the witch Cyclops. So here appears the Caliban, the another character of the play, who is the son of the witch Cyclops, who was earlier acquainted the whole island before the arrival of uh, Prospero. So here Caliban has been Prospero's slave, but he is insolent and rebellious and is only controlled through the use of magic. On a one part, he is very free, he is rebe rebellious, he is insolent, but on the other part, Prospero controlled Caliban through his magic. Caliban claims the island as his own and says that Prospero has tricked him in the past. Prospero is unmoved, claiming that Caliban is corrupt. So here both the characters, Prospero blames Caliban as a corrupt, corrupt personality, corrupt character. And on the other side, Caliban blames or claims that the island relates to him only, which was tricked by Prospero earlier. All right. So having tried to even uh, this particular Caliban, tried to rape Miranda once and Prospero threatens and cajoles Caliban's obedience. The Caliban's presence makes Miranda uneasy because once he tried to rape Miranda over, the, over that island. So this is all um, came to know we all about Caliban. So earlier I have mentioned you all one thing all about Caliban and Prospero. There is a post-colonial colonial theory about both these characters that the Caliban is presented here as the uh, natives or inhabitants of that particular island or place and Prospero is a colonial who has such power to control the native of that particular place. Now we are moving ahead with the same scene of act first. After Caliban leaves Ariel enters with Ferdinand. So here the Ferdinand about whom I told you that Ferdinand is the son of King Alonso, the King of Naples or the Prince of Naples, who seizes Miranda first time and the two fall instantly in love with each other. So there fall the love, love at first sight between Ferdinand and Miranda 
although this is what prospero intended to have happened so the things are moving all according to the prospero's plan he does not want it appear too easy for ferdinand even so he accuses ferdinand of being a spy when prospero uses mag magic to control ferdinand miranda begs him to stop so here in this scene what happen is here ferdinand appears along with ariel or ariel brings ferdinand in front of miranda and prospero then miranda and Pro sorry ferdinand both fall in love with each other love at first sight happened over there and this was all planned by prospero this was intended by prospero and but here what uh, prospero wants he doesn't want it to happen very easily so he tried to examine uh, ferdinand and he claims uh, ferdinand to be a spy and he tries to just control or oh, control ferdinand with his magic but here miranda begs him to stop all this so this is all about our act first scene first and scene second all right so hope till now you understand all about the drama's first conception which is all tragic tragedy happen have tragedy is happening over there with all the characters because all the characters are moving from good to very worse positions which is though conspired or which was though planned by uh, prospero only so here we are moving towards the next act two and scene first of the drama so in this particular scene what happen is the scene opens with all the passengers from the ship except for ferdinand because ferdinand is boarded over the another side of the island where prospero and miranda exist so gathered on a stage gonzalo begins with a speech celebrating their survival of the storm and their relative safety on the island but king alonso cannot be cheered because he is sure that his missing son ferdinand has drowned in the meantime antonio and sebastian whisper among themselves and be little be little both alonso's grief and gonzalo's cheer so here in this scene what happen is all the rest the character all the rest passengers of the scene of the ship boarded over the another side of the uh, island there gonzalo the honest lord he starts speaking he uh, just uh, giving the speech over the celebration of their own survival so there the all are cheer but except king alonso because he thinks that now his son his uh, son ferdinand has drawn and he died over there so that's why king alonso isn't happy anymore he isn't cheer cheering up over there but the rest of the passengers are cheering over the scene that um, now we can survive more so here in the meantime antonio the brother of prospero and sebastian the brother of alonso whisper among themselves and be little both alonso's grief and gonzalo's cheer so they both are aware about the gonzalo's cheer cheering speech and all about the alonso's grief now what happen is when antonio and sebastian join the general conversation around the king they make no attempt to soothe him so here antonio and sebastian both had presenting over there instead of antonio instead of alonso's provided help to antonio before 12 years he is in such state that both antonio and sebastian alonso's are his own brother are not in state to soothe him over his grief of losing son instead they tell alonso that he should not have permitted his daughter to marry the african sebastian tells alonso that had he not permitted the marriage the royal party would not have been at sea and thus never in the storm in the storm so instead of soothing alonso what sebastian and antonio are start speaking that you shouldn't get you shouldn't took this decision of marrying your daughter to the african african prince if you if you wouldn't decide if you wouldn't took such decisions then then we wouldn't be bored over the sea and there wouldn't be any kind of royal party over the sea and this storm wouldn't happen with them at all so instead of soothing him over the losing of his own son 
they sebastian and antonio both just try here to blame over his decision that he was he did wrong after taking such a decision in short ferdinand would still be alive with alonzo had acted properly these are harsh words to grieving father father sorry so all the words which were spoken by uh, antonio and sebastian so these are harsh words for him and he got hurt by all these words and gonzalo gently chastises uh, sebastian for his insensitivity so here gonzalo he gently asks sebastian to be sensitive towards his own brother alonzo but as he is insensitive towards his brother he uh, abuses him or he scolds him gently do for his insensitivity so here now in this scene ariel enters unseen by the group on the stage and puts all of them to sleep except sebastian and antonio so except sebastian and antonio all the passengers all the rest passengers are fall to sleep by ariel by the magic of ariel who is not seen by the people who are present to over them left awake antonio and sebastian devise a plot in which sebastian will seize his brother's crown much as antonio had ears earlier seized his brother's title and property so here what antonio suggested sebastian to do is whatever he did along with his brother prospero the same thing he wants sebastian to do with his own brother alonzo alike he he is he banished antonio had banished his own brother from his own property the 12 years before with the conspiracy along with this particular person alonzo the same thing has to be done by sebastian all right so they both conspire in this particular scene although sebastian has some concerns or concerns antonio dismisses such worries and urges action a while everyone is asleep sebastian needs little convincing and with antonio the two draw their swords and advance on the sleeping king and his party so here antonio and sebastian both conspire on a place and they start putting the sword over the sleeping king in the party so here you could see how cruel or how shrewd or how sharp minded antonio is he he succeeded in convincing sebastian to kill his own brother and antonio sorry i'm so sorry alonzo so here they both put the swords in their hands to kill alonzo while he is sleeping at this particular moment ariel again appears over the scene and takes action he awakens gonzalo the honest lord in the time to prevent the murders so antonio and sebastian quickly concoct concoct a story to explain their drawn swords warning of great noise as if from bulls or lions alonzo is easily convinced of his brother's sincerity and the scene ends with the royal party leaving the stage in search of ferdinand so here what happened is at the time of their attacking upon the sleeping king Anzo, alonzo ariel makes gonzalo awake and at the at that time why they are catch rand re, sorry i'm so sorry for this while they both antonio and sebastian are caught red handed by gonzalo at that time they cook a very interesting story funny story or full story in front of gonzalo that they took the swords just to made in finding a way the noises of bulls and lions over there so alonzo and here alonzo is very worried he is in he is in grief so he easily convinces by the story of his brother that yes my brother is whatever he is telling is right and the scene ends with the royal party leaving the stage in search of ferdinand so here ends our 8 second scene first now we are leading ahead with the act 2 scene 2 
In this scene, what happens is the scene opens with Caliban cursing Prospero. So whenever uh, Caliban is out from the Prospero's spell, what he does, he usually curses Prospero over over snatching the power and the acquaintance from his mother. So here, when he hears someone approach, Caliban assumes it is one of Prospero's spirits coming to torture him once again. So here you could see in what kind of uh, fear or scaredness uh, in Caliban is basically. So whenever he hears somebody arrives over the scene, he starts hiding himself behind anything uh, in, in order to escape himself from torturing by the other spirits of Prospero. So Caliban falls to the ground and pulls his cloak over his body and leaving only his feet protruding so here only his feet are seen by the uh, upcoming passenger or by the upcoming member of the or character of the scene of the drama but instead of prospero the king's jester trinculo was there trinculo i told you all about that he is the jester of the king and Trinculo enters over there and Trinculo is looking for shelter from the coming storm when he sees Caliban. At that point, he sees the Caliban's feet basically, which is protruding over there. With his body partially covered with the clock, Caliban appears to be half man and half ship. Or at least is, uh, at least that is Trinculo's initial impression. So what here, Trinculo impression by Caliban's look that he must be the half man and half fish the way he, he in which he is covering Caliban is covering himself so uh, sorry half man and half ship or at least that is Trinculo's initial impression Trinculo immediately sees the possibility that this fine presence he can take this monster back to the civilization and display it, charging admission to suspect spectators who want to view this aberration aberration of nature so by seeing the scene of a caliban though he doesn't know about the caliban yet so here trinculo as he is jester of the king he starts uh, making his own imagination imaginative world what he starts seeing is uh, he can take this particular aberration of nature uh, a half man and half ship to the civilization and he can charge the people who want to see this particular uh, tremendous magic of the nature. So yet after touching Caliban, he touched Caliban over there and in Trinculo decide that his find is not half man, half ship, a half fish, sorry, but an islander. So now after touching Caliban, he came to know, he comes to know Trinculo comes to know that this is not in half man or half ship and his imaginative world breaks down over there and he sees him as an islander only. With the coming storm, Trinculo decides to seek shelter under the Caliban's clock. So what Trinculo does, he's, he just hide, hides himself behind or beneath the Caliban's clock. Later on, in the same scene, what happened is, here, now in the scene, the king's butler, Stefano, enters. So there, Caliban on the one side and uh, Trinculo on the other side hide themselves behind beneath the Caliban's clock. And here, Stefano arrives to the scene and he is clearly drunk. Stefano stops at the sight of object of the ground covered with a clock with four legs sticking out. So four legs were two of Caliban and two of Trin Trinculo. So by these four legs, he attracted towards that fallen thing over the ground. Like Trinculo and Stefano immediately sees the financial possibility that such a creature offers back home so the same imaginative world is created by or built up by this particular stefano too who is he was control uh, completely and in control of drunkness 
so stefano again starts imagination that yes this creature of four legs i can take this creatures to the world of civilization there i can charge to the people whoever want to see this creature of the nature but all of stefano's stefano's poking has alarmed caliban who thinks that he is about to experience a new form of torture beyond the beyond what prospero has provided but after uh, after caliban after caliban awakening up from that particular posture of falling over the ground and he he came to know about the poking alarmed of stefano of stefano then he starts thinking the same thing are always going on in the back of the mind of caliban that of course i'm going through with the another kind of torture by the another spirit of prospero but here trinculo stefano and caliban these three are strangers to each other now meet to with, with each other so after pulling the clock from caliban's head stefano begins to pour wine into caliban's mouth so now he starts making the caliban drink, drunken too trinculo emerges from under the cl- clock and happy to find another survivor of the storm on the island joins stefano and caliban in the drinking wine so both these characters bo- sorry not both these three characters caliban trinculo the jester stefano the butler and caliban so these three combine the starts drinking the wine together Caliban drunkenly watches the happy reunion of Stefano and Trinculo and decides that Stefano is a good drop from heaven. Caliban swears devotion to this new god and the three leave together. Amid Caliban's promises to find Stefano the best food on the island. So this is all happened in this particular act uh act two scene two where these three foolish characters we can say which create an a kind of humor in this uh, in such kind of tragic situations so these kind of situation make the play tragic comedy on the one side there the grief of the alonzo is going on and on the other side of the play these three characters create fun or humor into this particular drama so for today this is all enough about our uh, the drama the tempest by william shakespeare as we have come across towards the two act and the scenes of these particular two acts so we all have done with the two acts of the drama until now so for further for further details of the overview of this particular drama wait till tomorrow so thank you so much for watching my video do subscribe like if you think this video is worthiest enough to give you proper information then do like do comment me if you have any idea or want to suggest me anything so thank you so much for watching my video thank you